studies of uh, AKT inhibitor AZD5363. These clinical trials were run across uh, two centers in the UK and one center in the Netherlands and two centers in Japan. AKT is a part of a signal transduction pathway. It's the way cells send messages from the exterior of the cell to the inside of the cancer cell. And this information flow is often hijacked by either mutations or the way the genes change and they switch on and actually signal more than a normal cell. And that's how some normal cells do transform into cancer cells. AZD5363 inhibits AKT and it influences the way a cancer cell dies, that is, increases apoptosis, reduces metabolism, and reduces growth. Now, this is the chemical structure of the drug itself, and it has very high potency, a very, what we call a low nanomolar potency in biochemical assays against all three isoforms of AKT. The clinical trial itself was conducted when the drug was given twice a day, continuously, and at, at once we reached a certain degree of toxicity, that it was written into the study that we could explore two different regimens. And the two different, so the three regimens that were finally taken forward was twice a day, every day, continuous, and four weeks was considered a cycle, or a four days on, three days off every week, or a two days on and five days off. And reassuringly, we found that the Actually, the toxicities of the side effects were very different de depending on the way we dosed them. So to give you an example, what we consider an on-target toxicity, the fact that you do get a side effect, but it is definitely related to the fact that your drug is hitting the target is hyperglycemia or a high blood sugar. And if you see the concentration of the drug, which is a C-max and the blood sugar, it, it actually correlates very well. So you're hitting, you have on-target toxicity it is associated with the maximum amount of drug in the body. But interestingly, it's actually very asymptomatic. So, you know, people have visions of people be becoming diabetic when you get a drug, but actually you have a high blood sugar. The patients don't have the symptoms of, you know, having to drink lots of water or pass a lot of urine or there are certain other uh, side effects associated with diabetes like diabetic ketoacidosis. We didn't see any of those. So the human body somehow seems to adapt to that. And the moment you stop the drug, you, your blood sugar comes back to normal. So it's not, or you don't induce a permanent diabetic state. Now this is, uh, these are assays done which try and find out whether the, what the drug is doing to the body. So, these are taken in hair follicles, which were taken before, from the eyebrow, before the patient actually had the drug, and four hours after the patient had a drug. And you can see this, there's a protein called PRAS40, and if you inhibit AKT, you would, this is downstream of AKT in that signaling cascade, you see inhibition of, of phospho-PRAS40 to an extent. So that was very reassuring, so we knew the drug is getting into the body, and actually inhibiting target in normal tissue. We also did nine paired biopsies which showed evidence of target modulation. But what we were really excited about once we've proven that you know, we could get away with an intermittent schedule which, where you could get the best of both worlds, you could get the least toxicity of rash and diarrhea and actually hit the target hard enough and gave, you know, patients could actually tolerate it. We saw two responses. Uh, one of the responses was in Japan, with a 38-year-old Asian female patient with uh, endometrioid ovarian cancer. She had had eight previous lines of chemotherapy, and these are CT scans showing a pulmonary or lung metastases, showing it's shrunk. And this actual tumor, when analyzed, had a AKT1 E17K mutation, which is what I talked about previously, one of those changes in the gene that hijacks the signal transduction pathway. Uh, and it made it very sensitive to this inhibitor. And about a year later, so baseline in day six, 268, the patient is still on four on three off and is continuing to respond. Another patient, which was treated at uh, my center, at the Royal Marsden Hospital, had, uh, she was 43 years old and had cervical cancer. 
Now, this is a notoriously chemo-resistant cancer. It doesn't respond to chemotherapy very well. And the tumor, when analyzed, had a big 3CA mutation. So this is a mutation in a gene that drives the PI3 kinase pathway. And she had a dose of 400 milligram BID, and this shows this big mediastinal lymph node shrinking. And this was proof of concept that, you know, not only could we get the drug in, it actually worked in the correct patients. So to conclude, AKT5363 is a potent inhibitor. It's a pan-AKT inhibitor. Some AKT inhibitors hit only one and two, uh, but this hits all three. We looked at three different regimens, and the maximal tolerated dose, which seems to be most, uh, I think the most advantageous as a single agent going forward, is a four days on, three days off. The toxicities include hyperglycemia, which is an on-target effect, and rash and diarrhea can be managed very well in these intermittent schedules. The drug levels in the body correspond to what would make a tumor shrink in animal models. We've got proof of concept inhibition of the target in normal tissue, in peripheral blood bone nuclear cells, I beg your pardon, in hair follicles, and in tumor biopsies pre and post. And finally, very reassuringly, we saw two responses, but they were seen in patients who had the mutation, and that's the way I think targeted treatment will go in single agent therapy. And the, currently, there are two or three, the two, two days on, five days off schedule is still continuing, and there are multiple other studies launched. Thank you.